JerseySports.com's original multimedia series talking all things ice hockey across North Jersey. We are into the new year. We are into the week when the Bergen County Tournament will be selected and seeded. So we are into high time in high school hockey. I am Corey Doviak. Playing down a man in the penalty box with a major is one of our co-hosts, Corey Robinson. He is unavailable tonight. So we are going to have to try to kill off this penalty with just one member of our illustrious panel of North Jersey High School Hockey Insiders. He is the head coach of the Westwood slash Riverdale slash Emerson Golden Hawk uh, Cardinal. What else we got? A Cavo fighting program of ice hockey guys. He is Kevin the Maven Sabella. What's going on, Maven? <laughs> Well, that was an interesting intro. <laughs> right. Um, Longly worded. No, yes, yes. Well, I'm sure I'm sure Mr. Robinson is probably painting the Fairlawn Halls, uh, what are the Cowboys, gray and blue? <laughs> yes. So he's probably, no uh, you know, redoing the, the locker rooms over there for his uh, little Cowboys. But, um, no, all well, good over here. Um, Hawks slash Cards slash Cavos are starting to play a little bit better. You know, we had a night we went one 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 in the holiday tournament up at the ice wall. Um, we beat a good Passaic Valley team last night, um, changing some things around, simplifying some things. So, hey, we're, we're trying to get back on track here, trying to make a little um, state bid. So uh, we'll see. But, um, you know, more importantly around here, it's county time, as you just said. You know, we got the meeting. I believe it's Wednesday is the cutoff, um, which is basically today. Teams right. probably play today and not again until so Wednesday, maybe one or two teams might. But, um, yeah, it'll be interesting. I mean, some teams, teams are starting to get home um, at the right time, as we say. And, and uh, you know, I, I think a lot of teams look forward to the ice fall. They're likely that it's all at once. I'm always a big fan of that. So you can always watch all the games. But, um, you know, some teams are starting to, you know, read the newspaper, read online. Some teams are starting to open my eyes. And, and uh, you know, so it should be interesting. Yes, and uh, head coaches of two of those teams, well, one who's really starting to play well, uh, winners of three of their last four, I think they're 3-0-1 in their last four games, Keith Bland, the head coach of the Paramus Catholic Paladins, will be a guest on the show tonight. And also we will talk to Dennis Jelsic, who is the head coach of the Paramus Ice Hockey Program, uh, which started the season 0-1 and is now 10-1 after ripping off 10 straight wins and uh, it's going to be interesting to get his thoughts about what's going on with the county tournament because, Kev, I'll ask you this too, and, you know, let's not be specific about Paramus, but there have been, uh, you know, in the six years that we've been doing this show, you know, we've seen Ramsey have its run as the, you know, uh, public school program to beat. We've had, we've seen Glenrock have its run. We've seen Northern Highlands, maybe Paramus this year, and, and it's nice to see a little changeover in, uh, you know, teams picking up that positive momentum. You know, in public school ice hockey, you're going to ride the ebbs and flows of, you know, the players that you have available. So maybe Paramus has turned a little bit this year. Yeah, no, I, I listen, I'll tell you, they're for real. I mean, we played them. I've seen them. Um, their one loss, I believe, came early on in the season uh, to Joe's. Um, you know, I, I know Joe's had, had a lot of positive things to say about them. Um, and they've beaten, they've beaten every team they have played so far. Um, they've they've rattled off in a row. Oh, hold on one second, Jordan. You want to be on the hockey show? Yeah. What uh, do we got? I'm nope. My daughter she says no. Yeah, no. Hey, listen, we don't. We don't uh, that's the Sabella household. If you come in, you get on the hockey. Show. <laughs> she doesn't want. Um, well, but we'll anyway, save no, we'll save listen. her for the soccer show because I've seen her at the yes. field and I know she knows what she's talking about. Yeah, she does. She definitely does. But uh, yeah. back to Paramus. No, they're they're for real, Corin. And I'm interested to see how they do in this tournament because, uh, you know, they're deep and uh, they got a decent goaltender. And, um, you know, so we'll see. And Paramus Catholic, too. Paramus Catholic's getting hot at the right time. You know, um, like you said, I think they have one loss in their last four or five. Um, so they're going to, you know, they're going to be tough, too. And then there's a the bunch of teams up at the ice wall. So, yeah. Uh, we'll see, man. We'll see. And it's very interesting, you know, just the inside dynamics of the way it's hockey night works. You know, two weeks ago, you couldn't make it. You were predisposed to, so Corey Robinson 
uh, pull, makes me go out to the ice vault. Uh, you know, I get the worst parking spot in the world, all the way up, you know, up the hill. <laughs> you, you know, you, you would think. And, and listen, we had Bobby Reese on as a guest too. You'd think there'd be some type of parking for doing the show, you know. But uh, you know, Corey Robinson drags me in there. Uh, we do it that way, and you set up a nice little guest list of Paramus. It's like theme night here, Paramus on yep. it's hockey night. Yeah. So yeah, listen, absolutely. Two different approaches, but two unquestionably professional co-hosts here. All right, Maven. Well, we're going to wade into the interview portion of this edition of It's Hockey Night without the great Corey Robinson. But what can we do? You know, the man is busy. He's pulled in many different directions. We're, we got nothing left to do but carry on by ourselves as we welcome in on the Felician University hotline here the head coach of the Paramus Catholic Paladins. He is Keith Bland. Coach, thanks for joining us here on It's Hockey Night. Thanks for having me. And it is a good time to have you, too, as uh, with the win last night or Friday night as we tape this on Sunday. Uh, the win over Passaic Valley gets you over 500, 5-4 five on the season. How about, well, let's start with this. I mean, you guys are obviously playing better here, making a push as the county tournament is coming up. Why don't you give us a little state of the state of the Paramus Catholic Paladins? Uh, we've been playing better uh, recently. We're three zero and one in our last four games. Um, I think we've started to realize what team, what kind of team we have to be in order to have success. Um, we've started to kind of play within our boundaries a little bit and try to keep the game as simple as we can. And uh, it's uh, it's paid off for us in the last few games here. Go ahead, Kev. I mean, Kev, have you played uh, Primus Catholic this year? Yes, yes, Keith. Um... I don't even remember the score, Keith, but that's kind of when they started their turnaround. Um, I was well, very <laughs> impressed with, um, you know, with uh, their forecheck. I was very impressed with how they were in the neutral zone. And like he said, they, they're they're keeping things simple. Um, they got a very good goalie, um, which we'll get to. And uh, they're really starting to turn around. Like he said, they're 3-0-1. So what's, what's been the key, Keith? If you, if you had to pick out, like, one or two things, what's really been the key? I think, uh, obviously, you, you just mentioned Joe Hughes in the net kind of keep us in every game. Uh, we rely on him a tremendous amount to make the saves and, and give us a chance to win every night. Uh, our lead and goal scorer, Austin Keith, has kind of put in some goals in some timely fashion and, and some critical moments of some games and given us leads. And, and we've been able to protect them, actually. We've tried to play well positionally um, and try to, and try to like you said, keep things as simple as we can. We don't have... Uh, over an abundance of talented players where we're going to rely on one, two, three guys to win every game for us. Uh, so we kind of just try to play well defensively, play positionally, and, and keep it simple, move the puck forward, get it in and out of our zone, get it into their zone, uh, try to create some turnovers, and, and capitalize on our opportunities. The other night, uh, we played a freshman goaltender against the Big Valley, uh, Frankie Smith, and, and he came in and, and made the saves that he needed to make, and we went to nothing. So it's kind of everybody just trying to realize that what part and what role they play in and, and the way we're going to have to play every night to, to win games and uh, have some success. And some brilliance. Yeah, I was, I was in, uh, oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. sorry. No, no, you go ahead. No, no, no. I was impressed with, I, I saw that score 2 nothing against Passaic Valley and then I saw the goaltender. I was very impressed with Frankie. I mean, that, that's a nice win against a, a quality program over there in Passaic Valley. Um, you know, that, that that's definitely a step in the right direction. You know, you mentioned your your goal scorer Teets, who's you know his own first hand. Obviously, he's certainly a kid that if you give him room and time, and like you said, these close games, all you need is a good goal scorer like him, and um, you know he could certainly change uh, change the game or a game, I should say. Um, yeah, he's you, definitely a dangerous you know, player out there. Yeah, definitely, coach. You know, it's kind of been the formula the last few games here. We're trying to keep the game tight. Uh, we're not as deep as we are other years, and. And we kind of have to play well and sound positionally, and, and you got to be able to catch a break here and there and get a bounce. And and we've been fortunate enough to have that in the last few games where Austin gets some room and and he's a big kid with a with a long stick and a good big stride, and and he's been able to capitalize on some of the chances he's got. And uh, and our goaltending has been pretty solid from Joe, and and like you said, uh, our freshman the other night came in and made the saves he had to. So uh, it's kind of been the formula the last few games here. Yeah. And a brilliant bit of scheduling, too. You stuck that Riverdale game right in there at the time where you needed to, you know, 
Send a little charge through the season. Got you turned around in the right direction and uh, left the Maven. Did you did you snow the Maven on the bench on your way out of the arena that night, Coach? Yeah. <laughs> you know what? We've, we've coached against each other uh, numerous times over the years, so it's no secret on, on what we do. I'm sure Coach knows exactly what we are and, and who he needs to key on. But, you know, it's it's kind of those things where we got a few bounces, and, and, and each game that we play against them is competitive. You never go into a game – Against a division rival, expecting to win and whatnot, you got to be able to put the work in. And and we were fortunate enough to win the first time we met. And uh, there's another matchup coming up in a few weeks, so we'll see what happens there. But uh, they've always been competitive over the years, and coach knows what we're going to do, and uh, we have an idea of what we're looking to do to defend against them. So um, they just had a big win over Big Valley last night as well. So you can't take anybody for granted, and and we know that. So uh, you know, you just do your homework and you put the work in, and and you see what happens. How about, you know, Corey Robinson always talks about the, the stages of the season, you know, like uh, from the preseason through that first couple weeks to see what you got. And then, you know, gearing up now, uh, you know, the, the Bergen County tournament represents the next part, and you guys are playing well going into this thing. I mean, how much do your kids think about it, and how much do you bring it up like, hey, let's get ourselves in a good position, get it, you know, maybe you get a, a favorable matchup in the first round, maybe win a game or two in this thing. You, you know, to be quite honest, we really haven't talked about it that much. Um uh, we, we started off it's a little slow in the beginning of the season. I think some guys are trying to realize what their roles are and and maybe they need to change the way they play and, and, and to fit into what we're looking to do um, and whatnot. But we really haven't talked about the county tournament. We've talked about getting back to 500 and learning to play the right way and keeping the game simple and doing the little things that will help us win and give us a better chance to win and, and not trying to over force things and, and be selfish players and try to just do little things um, that maybe the average person doesn't see, but as a, myself as a coach and whatnot, uh, all those little things contribute to bigger things at the end and help you win games. So that's kind of what we've really been focused on one game at a time. It's very cliche, but um, that's the way we've gone here. We haven't looked ahead, and, and hopefully maybe some guys are starting to realize what they need to do and how we need to play together uh, to, to win some games here and moving forward. What else you got, Maven? Well, no, I'm, you know, it's, it, I mean, we'll get more into it next week, um, with the county tournament, um, obviously, but, you know, Keith kind of bought a I mean, besides your top three, maybe even four seeds, from five to 12, you, you might see an upset or two or three. Right. I mean, there's, you know, Keith, I know, you know, Keith, Keith's a rink rat, I know, and so am I. I mean, we've seen a lot of teams, seen a lot of games, and, you know, I, I mean, it's just one of those years where, you know, you don't, it's kind of a little, little, little top heavy. You know, you got a lot of average teams. You got, you know, one, two, three, four, like top teams. And then from there, any given night, if any teams are going to make mistakes or a goalie's off or a goalie's on, you know, you, you could see, uh, some upsets. And, uh, you know, again, we'll get into that more next week. Um, Keith, with West Essex, what are you looking for in them? You know what? From, uh, from some of the scores that I've seen, we watched them play one day. They, they, uh, they play three lines. They're, they're kind of deep, and they got some pretty decent players. they got a defenseman that's pretty good. I think it's going to be one of those games, again, that we're going to have to make sure we're aware defensively, um, making sure we play our positions in the zone and, and don't run around and just try to get the puck out and maybe wait for a break here and there. Um, I think they're probably a little bit more deeper and better than I expected, but it'll be a good challenge for us, I think. Uh, obviously being 3-0-1 in our last four, this is the best stretch that we've played so far. Um, I think we have a little bit more confidence going into the next few games than we did originally uh, to start the season. So, um, you know, it's, it's it, it'll be a tough test for us, but it'll be good leaning into the county tournament. Um, and like you said, Coach, I think that other than the first top four or maybe five teams, um, a lot of the other teams are, are average and comparable to one another. So you might see an upset in that first round. Yeah, a lot of parity. Yeah, agreed. And that makes for a fun tournament. I mean, especially, you know, you talk about top-heavy. The Burton County tournaments have been, you know, uh, top-heavy since its inception. So a lot of the fun happens early on before you get to the, you know, the stories about the streak that continues uh, of championships. But I, I think in the first couple of rounds is where it's actually more fun than uh, – you know, because no one is expected to win besides the number one seed, and you can have a good story or two pop up. And you know, Keith, or maybe you tell your kids, "Hey, why not us? Be that the Cinderella team that gets as far as you know, being opposite the number one." I think everybody that goes into this realizes that there's really 
uh, one team, and obviously <laughs> it's been only one team to win it since it since it started. So, and everybody's aware of that, and I don't think anybody would doubt that. Um, you just hope that you put a, put on a good showing, and you're competitive in the games, and right. and and you see and you see where the chips may fall, you know. So, um, it's an opportunity for all the teams, and like we said, I think there's a lot of teams that are comparable and and average and basically the same as one another, other than those top few, but. Um, there's there's one team kind of looking down at everybody else, and everybody knows it. But it, it is what it is, you know. It's it's hard to compete with that, and and we're not expecting to get to that point and ever probably beat Don Bosco. But um, you know, it's it is what it is, you know. So yeah, you just try, you try to go in and you win as many games as you can and see what happens. And I think you and I both did a great job of talking around the issue without actually saying anything until the last uh, sentence of your thing where we were talking about where, you, where the words Don Bosco came out of your mouth there. Yeah, I mean, it's hard. It, and, you know, it, I, we, we talk about it here all the time, Kev, be interested. Well, you, you've also given your opinion, too. I mean, uh, I don't know. It, it would be more fun if there were more champions, but you also have to tip your cap and, and give full respect to the team that does it year in and year out. All right, enough said about that. Kev, anything else do we have for the coach, or uh, you know, where should we go? No, no, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing you know how they do tomorrow versus West Essex, and then seeing how they hope you know I, I would assume they would get into the tournament and see how they're doing. You know, it's funny, <coughs> Keith and you know my team and Keith very similar, and we're kind of going through the same thing, just trying to keep everything simple. You know, years past, Keith, like he's mentioned, had some. You know, better players, better scores. Same with us this year. You know, understanding what we're both going through. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've 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 said it on the bench and at practice. Like, keep it simpler, keep it yeah. simpler. And I'm sure Keith is doing the same thing. And but you know what? Sometimes you do that in all sports, no matter what team you have. Strange things happen. So especially high school sports. Yes. So uh, you know, so we'll see. I'm not surprised that they're three zero and one. Certainly not. And. Like I said, they're, they're getting hot at the right time. So uh, looking forward to seeing how they uh, do here tomorrow and, uh, and then hopefully in the counties. Yeah, Keith, last one for me. Is there a kid or maybe uh, a couple of kids that have, you know, really come on? You, know, you mentioned your goaltender and, and a couple others, but is there one that maybe doesn't show up in the box score night in, night out, one or two that have helped you get on this little uh, bit of a streak here? Well, you know what? To be honest with you, Austin has probably scored. Uh, Keith has probably scored two thirds of our goals so far this season. Um, we've had some other guys contribute in some other ways. Uh, Julian Sawinski scored a big goal for us the other night to make it two nothing, um, and it's kind of been scoring by committee. We're not really. We've played a lot more tight games than we have in other years. We really right. don't have those three or four guys that are getting fifteen, twenty, twenty-five goals as I've had in other years. So. It's kind of been try to keep the game close. Our goaltending, like we've talked about earlier, has really kind of kept us in. It's been one of the bright spots here for us so far that, that we've had no issues with is our goaltending. So we're just trying to keep the games close and, and hopefully catch a break here and there and protect leads and, and, and keep it simple. It's so repetitive, but I, I do, I mentioned it a hundred times on the bench during games <laughs> and practice, you know, keep the puck moving forward, work to get it out of the zone, work to get it into their zone, take some of the pressure off our defensemen. And keeping it simple is really, you know, that's what it's about. Sometimes less is more and just uh, live the fight another day sometimes is kind of the key phrase uh, to get the puck out and get it in and, and then take a chance at another opportune time. So that's kind of what we've been going by here so far. Keith Bland, the head coach of the Paramus Catholic Fighting Paladins. Uh, sounds like we're going to have to set up a a vendor uh, table at your next game with t-shirts that say hashtag keep it <laughs> simple. Uh, we'll put the Riverdale on one side, Paramus Catholic on the other. We'll sell a bunch and then we'll go up to the bar after the game. How about that? <laughs> That's about right. That's the phrase. <laughs> Keith, thanks for coming on here. Uh, pleasure to talk to you again. First appearance this year. Get in that tournament, win a couple games. We'll have you back on. And uh, Thanks for hopping on here and continued good luck with the rest of the season. Great, guys. Thanks for talking to me. Appreciate it. All right, Maven. Good stuff there with Paramus Catholic head coach Keith Bland. And now we move on to the public school side of things. And we welcome in the head coach of one of the hottest public school ice hockey programs in Bergen County and North Jersey at large. He is Dennis Jelsick, the head coach of Paramus slash Hackensack slash Lyndhurst. So any other slashes, Dennis? And thank you for coming here, coming on here on It's Hockey Night. 
Hey guys, no problem. Uh, any other slashes? No, we can add any other school that's interested. Though we're always looking. So that, there's your free advertisement for tonight. Yeah, I mean, you know, jersey <laughs> makers lo- must love you guys though, because you know you got to add all those letters onto the jersey. So uh, you know, if you pay by the letter, you, those guys are making a killing. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely been uh, it's definitely been a fun addition of teams. I'll tell you that much. In towns, I should say, and families. So yep. it's a good group. Yes, and it has to be fun here too. When you are have played eleven games and you have won ten of them, and uh, you're in a great place here uh, down the stretch, just as the Bergen County tournament's about to be selected and seeded. Yeah, we're in a good spot. We're happy with where we're at. Uh, the boys are having a good time. I must say, even before the games started, they were having a good time before that. They're just a good group of kids that love playing and playing together. I could say, and it's hard to get that mix, as Mister Savello knows, from being from so many towns. To get a good mix of schools that gel so well and meet each other so well and basically see each other, you know, for ice hockey and now they're seeing each other away from ice hockey too because they become good friends. So it's fun to watch and fun to be a part of. Go ahead, David. Well, Dennis, I, I was impressed with you guys. You know, when we played you guys, I've seen you a bunch of times after that. Um, you know, what what has been the key to you guys' success so, so far? Energy, playing one way. And everyone buying in. There you buying go. Into everything, everything that you say, they don't question. They just do it. And if they're not successful at it, they'll start to question, like any high school student or athlete would. But they'll get right back to it and say, "Hey, it's worked before. Let's go right back to it." Dennis, you yeah. mentioned uh, you mentioned the the gelling of schools, and you know it, it's uh, co ops are something we've talked about on this show in the past, and. You know, trying to keep the high school game healthy and making sure there's enough programs for these kids to play in. And you just touched on it in your first answer that you gave us, too, about, you know, the kids coming together and becoming friends and everything else. But, you know, you're a Lynnhurst-based guy. For people who don't know, Dennis is also the Lynnhurst boys uh, soccer coach, doing a heck of a job down there with that program. Uh, and, you know, so you're Lynnhurst-based. How many guys do you have from each place? And really, I've asked Kevin this question, too, because he's got three schools in his program. How much work do you have to do? Um, to really turn three towns, three sending districts into one team? Well, I would be foolish not to mention our parents' association and Kevin Moran, who is one of the best in this area of getting um, our name out there, getting kids together, getting programs together, and our three athletic directors have been nothing sort of outstanding. There's not a single time that we've asked for anything. You're talking busing. And you know how that goes. It's not easy to get busting nowadays. Kevin deals with that, I'm sure. Um, They've been nothing short of fantastic. Kevin has been, for the last eight years since I've been here, he's the reason the program has worked that. I mean, I say that to him every day. We laugh about it because, Coach, you're the coach. I said, yeah, but without you and advertisement, all the work behind the scenes, this doesn't happen. You don't get the bowling alley visits. You don't get the trips to Army. You don't get the trips to Quinnipiac like we had last year just to get all the boys together and in the same area because they're all from so many places. But I will say they do see each other more now that they're older and some of them are driving and parents are getting involved and getting to places together. Um, it's unbelievable how easy it's been. And people think it's hard and a lot of work. I always tell them it's work, definitely. But when you have people that buy in, parents and players and athletic directors and school districts, it's very simple. I think, hey, that, I think that's a great answer, and that's uh, very encouraging to hear because, you know, like uh, it just sounds like a uh, well-run high school organization, and if it's about the kids and giving them an experience, listen, it's working. You're 10-1. and one. Go ahead, Kev. No doubt. Um, Dennis, let's get on the ice with your team. I was impressed. You know, you were rolling two, three lines. Who's been, let's start with the goal scorers. Who, who's been putting the puck in the net for you guys and doing a nice job? We'll start with Anton Safanov, a sophomore um, from Paramus. Goes to Bergen Academies, which is in Hackensack. So, yeah, lives in Paramus, goes to school in Hackensack. So he's part of two districts, really. Um, he's been putting a lot of pucks in that for us. Kyle Budaloop has been putting pucks in that for us. He went from defense to offense this year. I think he's a natural-born winger, but he said he was a defenseman until we changed that this season. Putting pucks in the net. Sean Leonard, Ryan Etchner. Those are just names off the top of my head. Edwin Keggy. We've had surprises yeah. like John Kopanowski. John's a center back in high school soccer. Plays for me at Lindhurst. He's been playing second-line wing and putting pucks in the net. And I'd be remiss to forget Anthony Otto, who's uh, 
playing a lot of checking line for us, but putting pucks in the net and getting chances, and it's very frustrated that he can't score. However, getting so many chances, and I tell him the other day, you're going to score a goal that wins us a game, and it happened at Newton Lenape Valley a few weeks ago. So, who's um, who's number twenty eight? Is that Ant- is that the first guy you mentioned? No, Ryan Etchner. Promise. He's a, he, yeah, he's a very nice player. I was very impressed. The lefty, right? Yes, lefty, but the best yeah. part about him, not just the skill level, is how smart he is and how much energy yeah. he brings no matter what the situation. You're talking last year when we had you know, a 7-7-5 seven, seven, and five season, barely 500, barely making the state tournament, always positive, never nothing or anything negative to say, just full speed ahead no matter what's going on. Last night we had a tough game against Tenafly, you know. We weren't on top of our game, down 2-1 in the second period, and... He just went out and made a team cause a turnover. All of a sudden, the game's tied 2-2. So. Yeah. Yeah, no, he's a, he's a nice. I was very impressed with his, uh, you know, just, just a hockey player out there. Very smart, stays out of traffic, very smooth um, out there. But I was I was also impressed. Hagee impressed me, very hard worker, you know. Um, Goes to the net, hard um, nose. You don't see that a lot nowadays. No. No, everything, absolutely Everything's no. perimeter game. You know, people depending on their shots constantly. You don't see hard nose going to the net. You know, put their head down and go to the net and score dirty goals. Yeah, I call no. them, and that's what that's what that's what won us the game last night. He won us the game going to the net hard. Just all of a sudden, puck pops out, and there it is, game over. So yeah, he's 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 a handful. I mean, you guys listen. I've seen a lot of pups, and we'll get into it more, kind of the theme as well for next week for calendars. But you know, if you guys could put it together, and uh, you guys could could definitely have a nice little run here in the county tournament. Um, you know, talking to other coaches too. You know, who's seen you, they say the same thing. So, you know, no pressure, as we say. <laughs> no, yeah, no, no Listen, this is pressure for Burton County. <laughs> we, we should change the name of NorthJerseySports.com to KboshSports.com because anytime, yeah. <laughs> anytime we have anybody on a show or I show up at a field to cover a game, you know, I'm like the black cat walking across, you know, Wrigley Field. People, <laughs> people see me coming a mile away. Sometimes they politely ask me to leave. But, uh, yeah, no pressure, coach. You know, Glenrock had yeah. its run. Ramsey had its run. Now it's Paramus, and you better get to the final against Don Bosco Prep. But, you know, yeah. <laughs> Hey, go get him. <laughs> but Dennis, this has to be fun for you too because you know it. Uh, you are in a position where you can be one of those teams to make a run. And yeah, you know, I don't. I don't know off the top of my head, but I don't think you have been a head coach of a team that has been in that position before, at least on the ice hockey side of it. Uh, so it's got to be fun for you too. Go take a shot. It's an absolutely. It's absolutely a fun time. Um, but. Like I always tell people, and I've been telling Kevin knows that I always say this, and Andy Escala from Town of Fly, we talk a lot. There's so many good teams in yeah. the county that the, you know, 5-5 five and five team that's hot now all of a sudden becomes a contender with two big wins. That's all it takes. Like you tell our guys, you know, you might be 9-1, and one, you might be 10-1, and one, but welcome to the target on your back that we're not used to. So that's not, right. not an easy position to be in, you know. That's, yeah. that's basically yeah. what we're telling every day now. That's at practice every day. You know, you think you run all the things to work on at practice. We're perfect at everything. Well, we're not perfect at everything because if we were, we'd be 11 and 0, number one. Right. And number two, you know, there's always improvement. Somehow there's a room for improvement. Well, who is the one loss? The one loss is St. Joe's opening night. Okay. Um, it was a great game both ways. We're winning 2 nothing and 4-2. They uh, scored a late goal in the second period, which turned the game around, made it 4-3. They tied it uh, a little late in the third and then won it with a minute left. So that's the first game of the season. And to be honest with you, Larry it might have been the best uh, thing that happened to this team. Yeah. Larry was very impressed with you guys. Yeah, yeah, and I did speak to him a few times. He's, you know, positive comments. Larry's a great coach, obviously known a long time in this area. A lot of positive things from him, too. So, Yeah, yeah. I didn't even realize that. I mean, do you, so you've, you lost on opening night and you've ripped off 10 in a row since. That's pretty impressive. Right? You know, because anybody can, uh, especially uh, around holiday time you, and and. When the, I, I don't know the situation with your travel kids or whatever, but you know, in high school hockey, sometimes you don't always have a full uh, roster with you all yeah. the time. And uh, to win yeah, ten in a row, dealing you know, with that though, everyone's yeah. dealing with travel guys. So we deal with it too. We tell everybody the same thing: they got to go where they got to go. We know, you know, what they have in their future. That's right. basically trying to make a name for themselves. And the best way to do it, and I hate to say it, I'm sure Kevin will agree, is high level travel hockey because there's a lot of people watching you. So. 
Yeah, and yeah. you guys are doing a great job. Anything else, Kev? I mean, I think uh, for his first time on It's Hockey Night, uh, Dennis Jelson did a great hey, job. Hey, hey, second time. It's all oh, right, time. right. Second time. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, you know what? Just thinking back, yeah, this this was not as good as the first one. I take that back. Yeah, you were definitely better the first time, right, Kev? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, we're ready to go. We'll, we'll get him on... Uh... You know, once he went, once he gets into the finals for the Kings, we'll have him on again. <laughs> yes, absolutely. There's the pressure word again. There it is. <laughs> Dennis yeah. Jelcic, head coach, Lynnhurst, Paramus, Hackensack, and uh, various and sundry other points around the Bergen County and North Jersey hockey <laughs> <laughs> hockey world. Thanks for joining us here on our talkie night. We had a good time talking to you. Awesome, guys. Thank you very much. Take care. All right, good stuff there with Dennis Jelcic, and we'll see how it all plays out, Maven, after we uh, put the. What what did they call the the uh, the stink eye on his uh, prospects yes. for uh, moving yes. forward deep into the Bergen County tournament? Yes, absolutely. We uh, you know we, we definitely put the pressure on them. Um, but all kidding aside, you know they're, they're a team to be reckoned with. Um, so we'll, we'll we'll see how they do. But uh, you know I'm, I'm glad for him. He, Dennis is a great guy. He's always keep. Um, but you know then like I said, Dennis's team, you know definitely has what it takes. To get to make a nice run, not only in the state but in the county. Yeah, you know. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. And not to jump ahead to the states, but they're in the public A like us. And looking at some of those teams, I mean, they are right there this year. They are right there. And, and you know, you said it before. And, you know, especially public, especially ice hockey public school. Like you could be up for two years and then down for four, and then up for one or two or three, and then down for one or two. You know, it's it's very yeah. it's tough to maintain. Um, you know, as I know and finding out. So, um, you know, when you have years like he has, when you had, you know, we went through this like two years ago, um, and it, it, it's special. It's fun, and I'm sure they're having a blast over there, like he said. Yeah, and just looking around public A, I mean, I know it's early, but you are paying attention. So who are there's maybe some of the teams from out of the area that, uh, you know, are, are ones to watch? You know what, there's a team, um, I believe they're from down south, Marlboro. I mean, you might know. But yeah. um, reading about them, they're beating up on some southern team, on some short team. So that's a team. Um, Montclair is going through some things, but they're always a tough team. Um, so those two teams stick out to me. And um, like, like it happens every year. And I'm sure in every sport it happens, but hockey you always have like one, one or two teams in each section that probably right now are sitting right at 500, and then come state time they might be like one or two over just because of the league they're in and who they play, and then all of a sudden you look up and they're in the semifinals. Right. Uh, out of nowhere, so, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You got, I mean, when I was at Mala, we went through that too. I mean, we were we were like the 11 seed, I believe, at Mala one year, and we ended up playing first round. Madison, who was like a 24, I went to see him. I was like, oh, they're okay, you know. Mm-hmm. And they came in, they whooped us, you know. They did. And it, and it's the league that they were in. And, and they actually made a great run to the semifinals. But that's my point. You know, you get a team like that who you don't know about now, but, you know, you'll find out about later. So there's definitely, you know, a couple teams in each section like that. Yeah, well, it'll be interesting to see. And, and you know, again, you have variables in ice hockey that you don't have in other sports, you know, as yeah. far as travel players and, you know, and, again, injuries. You don't know when kids are coming back and all, all those type of things. It, it, it makes for some surprising runs at the end, too. So, but we're, yeah, listen, Absolutely. Yeah. we are where we are. So we're going to sit here and we're going to watch it all happen. You will do it uh, rinkside. I will do it phone side here at the world headquarters of NorthJerseySports.com. But we will do it every week. We will get Corey Robinson back in the mix for next week. I know people are probably cr- clamoring for the grade eight. You're uh, NHL <laughs> hockey rankings that you two love yes. and take so much care in putting together week in, week out. We weren't able to do it two weeks ago because you were gone. We weren't able to do it this week because Corey's gone, and I don't know anything about hockey. So, you know, <laughs> it's no fun to do it with just one guy. So we will put the whole crew back together next week, and we will see you on It's Hockey Night. Follow the leader.